Okay, Calvary, I don't even know if we're ready to sip on this one yet or not, but that's good right there. I'm damn sure ready to pour. So, let's go. What's up, Calvary? It's your girl, Naisha Nicole, back again with another video and another sip and pour. So I know it's been a minute since I've done a sip and pour, but when I tell you guys, I have been on the move. Um, I've still been trying to upload every single week, um, but your girl has been busy. You hear me? Busy. I just celebrated my 33rd birthday. Yay me. Um, make sure you check that video out of my birthday vlog. It's definitely filled with some stuff. So uh, make sure you go ahead and check that out. I'll le leave a link to that video up here and in the uh, description box down below. But today, we're going to do a sip and pour. We're going to relax. We're going to have us a nice cocktail that I just showed y'all how to make. Um, very easy. Only two ingredients. I don't like ice, so I use frozen fruit, peaches for this time um but you guys go ahead and get your cocktail ready but i'm gonna tell you guys about the worst date i have ever been on i mean like ever in the history of dating this has to be the absolute worst date ever go ahead and make sure you click that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any other juicy details when I might do another sip and pour. You never know what the sip and pours are going to hold. I'm telling you, you never know what's going to come out my mouth on these sip and pours. Because uh, I'm sipping. And I'm pouring tea. So, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss any juicy details, honey. Into my story, the worst date ever. Um... I'm going to just start at the beginning. So, I am in this little... They keep saying it's not a dating group. However, they encourage dating. Well, you determine what it is. And in the title, it says singles in blank area where I'm at. So, um, yeah, you determine is it a dating group or is it not a dating group? You tell me. But anyways, I'm in this little group and... Like I said, they encourage dating amongst the members. And um, one of the guys reached out to me. And he goes, you know, I see you post. I would really love to get to know you, blah, blah, blah. So we messaged each other for a couple days back and forth. Nothing heavy. Honestly, it's not even really what I would consider getting to know one another. It's just the, you know, good morning, how are you? Oh, I'm good, blah, blah, blah. That type of regular stuff that I am sick of. Dating is so daunting right now. I'm telling you, after 30, after 25, and especially in the Charlotte area, the ghetto. dating is a hot mess. But that's neither here nor there. So we messaged each other back and forth a couple days. And then finally he's like, well, I want to take you out. I'm like, okay, cool. To me, that's initiative. You know, he didn't wait for me to ask, you know, when are we going to go out or anything like that. He actually took the initiative and asked me, could he take me out? So I'm like, sure, you know, that's cool. Where would you like to go? Didn't get a response. So that day goes by. And then um, he was like, well, I'm, when are you free? So first thing, as a single mother, I'm never free. I'm a single mother. I work a full-time job, nine to five, if that's what you want to call it, but a full-time job. I have a real estate investment company and I'm a content creator. I don't have no free time, honey. So tell me, when would you like to take me out? Where'd you want to go? Anyway, neither here nor there. The brother took some initiative and asked me to go. So he said, when are you free? And I told him, I said, you know, when would you like for me to be free? I can try and make myself free um what time what day so finally we pick a time and day i could be free on thursday what time do you want to meet up he said like seven to start with so this is like tuesday now 
So we're still messaging, you know, the good mornings, how are you, how's your day going, good night type stuff. Very basic, not really getting to know one another, but at least we're still communicating because a lot of times, I'm not going to lie to y'all, I'm that person that will ghost. When I lose interest, I will ghost your ass. For real, for real. I, you know, I will let it be known that I'm not interested in subtle ways, but I am very bad about ghosting. That might be why I'm single. Anyway, um, I still continue to talk to him, even though the conversation was dry as fuck. He never told me where we wanted, where he wanted to meet up at. So I'm like, okay. I keep asking, you know, where do you want to go? What type of things are you into? Mind you, he asked me. So this really ain't even on me to be asking this stuff. I feel like if a man asks you out, he should have the, the, the pleasure of planning the dates. If I ask a man out, I'm going to plan it. Anyway, he um never answers the question about where we're going to meet up at. So I get my best friend to babysit for me for a few hours. I'm like, okay, I'm meeting up at 7.00. I should be home by 9 if the day is going really good, maybe 10, 30, 11. So, Thursday rolls around. My best friend gets here, getting dressed. It's almost 6.30, which is when I'm planning to walk out the house. And he texts me and he was like, can we push the date back to 8? Bro, I'm going walk out this house. But, you know what? Cool. Whatever. Things happen. I'm like, okay, we can push it back to 8. Um, where are we going? Still don't know where we're going. He still doesn't answer. So at this point, I probably should have canceled at this point because there's so many red flags, but I didn't. I'm trying to give this man a chance because I am very cold when it comes to that kind of stuff. But whatever. Yeah, I should have canceled again. Anyway, so... I'm still getting dressed. I'm starting to take my time now instead of rushing. Now it's 7.30. And I'm getting ready to walk out the house. So I go to the car. Mind you, I still don't know where the fuck I'm going. So I'm like, you know, I'm not going to leave my house until you tell me where we're going. Where would you like for me to meet you at? Now, time out, pause. I'm old school. So I really like for a man to come and pick me up. You don't have to do the whole come knock on my door, bring me flowers type thing. However... I do like for a man to come pick me up. But things was already so rocky. I really didn't want this man to know where I stayed at. So, yes, I'm driving to this date. So, I'm like, um, I'm not leaving my house until you tell me where I'm going. I'm not getting on the highway, none of that, until I know exactly where I'm going. And I say this to him not only because, A, I'm not going to leave my house until I know where I'm going. But, B, I am that person. I'm going to tell somebody where I'm going. I don't care if it is right around the corner or you know what have you i'm telling somebody where i'm going who i'm going with i'm taking a picture of your license plate all of that sending a picture of what you look like i'm gonna tell somebody where i'm going matter of fact i'm telling two and three people where i'm going just in case people crazy so finally he was like okay let's meet up at this bar um restaurant type place and the area that it was in is a very upscale area so i was like okay this has to be a nice place i've never been there before let's go so I get on the road. As I'm pulling out of my driveway, my complex, I get another text from him. No, matter of fact, he called me. And he was like, yo, I'm still running a couple minutes behind. Um, I'm coming, but I'm, I'm running a few minutes behind. So take your time. I'm like, okay, he's still coming. At least he gave me the courtesy to call and tell me that he was running behind. So, boom. I'm going to go around to the bar around the corner, and I'm going to get me a little drink while I'm waiting. I don't get out during the week very much. I don't get to, you know, socialize during the week very much. I'm not going to go back home and disturb my kid um, and make him have to see me leave again. I'm going to just go to the bar and wait. So, I go to the bar. Mind you, it's almost 8 o'clock at this point. It's almost 8.15 at this point. So, go to the bar, I have a drink, pay my tab, leave, it's after, it's almost 9 o'clock. So, I get back on the road and I head to the bar that him and I are supposed to be meeting up at. So, I get there, he's still not there. I'm in my car, sitting outside the bar, he's still not there. 
So he calls me and he was like, I ain't even going to lie to you. My car broke down on the way to the spot. Now I want y'all to put a pin in that. Remember that. Write it down. Put it on a sticky note. Put it up on the wall somewhere. And remember that. He said his car broke down on the way to the bar. Just remember that. Okay. Matter of fact, put it down in the comments so that you can go back to it and refer to it later. His car broke down on the way to the bar. I'm like, oh, dang, you know, I'm sorry. He was like, but I'm going to get an Uber, and I'm going to come up there. I'm like, okay, I'll see you when you get here. I'm in a such and such type of car. He was like, well, go ahead, go inside, and go ahead and order you a drink. I'll be there in a minute. I'm like, okay. So I go inside, and I do just that. I get my wine. I'm waiting for him. He finally comes in. I should have left right there, too. He comes in. Now, mind you, we're Facebook friends at this point. So I've stalked his pictures. I know what he looks like. I'm sure he stalked mine. He knows what I look like. So when he walks in, he looked like he tried to fix the car before he got there. I mean, like, either he is just getting off work from a mechanic shop or he tried to fix the car before he got there whatever <sighs> i'm trying to change y'all i know i know i'm trying to change y'all i really am so i'm not judging this man i should have judged him but i'm not judging this man so he gets there he looks like he looked whatever he has locks and they're just all over the place unkept he still, you know, he still looks good, um, you know, he's still cute, but he looked dirty. So, I'm like, okay, Lord, here we go. And he comes, he sits down, he's like, oh, Naisha, how are you? Nice to meet you in person. I'm sorry that I gave you the runaround. I don't really operate like that, but I did really want to tell you that my car broke down. Um, I was trying to do what I could do to get here, but, you know, I'm sorry. He apologizes, and it's very sincere. So, I'm like, you know what? All's well that ends well. He's here. He don't look the cleanest, but at least he's still cute in the face. So, cool, you know. I'm over it. Whatever. So, we're talking. We're chatting. Having good conversation, despite the dry conversations that we've had over, you know, Facebook and text messaging, despite those dry com conversations, the conversation is flowing. So he's like, you know, are you going to eat? I was like, I'm not hungry, you know, I don't really, I'm not hungry. I don't really want anything. I ate a big lunch. And I wasn't trying to be cordial because I have my own money. So regardless of if I'm on a date, out with my girls, out by myself, out with my kid, whomever I may be out with. I'm going to order what I want. I'm not a spare your pockets type of chick. Like, I'm going to order what I want because I can afford to pay for it myself. So, I'm like, I'm not trying to spare him any. I'm really not hungry. He's like, oh, you're trying to be cute, blah, blah, blah. So, I'm like, okay, cool. So, I'm looking at the menu. I'm not hungry. I'm really not hungry. So, I order an appetizer, a crab cake. I've never been here before. I don't know what size the crab cake is, none of that. I did look at the price. I want to say it was maybe all of $12. Mind you, at this point, I've had a half a glass of wine and a crab cake. Glass of wine, $8. Crab cake, appetizer, $12. So I'm up to maybe $20 at this point. So we're laughing. We're talking. Um, he orders... Um, some type of flatbread, but it had a whole lot of different stuff on it. So I was like, okay, he's got a refined palette. He's got a different palette. You know, most of, most black men, they go out, they're going to order the same thing. Some chicken, a burger, steak, well done. You know, not really too much of a refined palette. But he seemed to have a refined palette with what he ordered. So I was like, okay, he might got a little bit of class to him. Let me stop judging this man based on looks and past experiences. He's out we're having a good conversation, good time. We laughing, we joking. I'm gonna start stop judging this man based off of what I didn't see prior to and what I see now. So, whatever. So we eating, chatting. Then he tells me that he is an atheist. And 
at 32 at that point i'm not dating y'all just to be dating i'm not dating just to say i had fun with somebody like i'm dating with a purpose i'm dating to get married i would love to get married i don't know about having more kids but i would love to get married and for me y'all if y'all have seen my uh vision board you guys know what's important to me if you haven't seen my vision board video go watch it after you finish this video and you'll find out what's important to me but i'm gonna tell you what's important to me <laughs> A man of God is very important to me. I need somebody that can lead me spiritually. I need somebody that can pray for me when my faith is wavering. I need somebody that can be that tower to go to when I need some spiritual guidance. Like, I don't want to marry no pastor, but a man that that has a faith is important to me. And he tells me he's an atheist. And I'm like, well, that's the end of this date. But... I'm here, so let's, you know, whatever. I'm like, okay, well, why? We start having a conversation about that. At this point, I already know it's not going anywhere, so I'm like, you know, I'm getting tired. I'm I'm about to go. It was nice to meet you. He was like, oh, okay. So he asked for the check. <laughs> he asked for the check. And... The check comes. Now, I know what I... I don't know. He had a couple drinks in the little flatbread thing. I don't know how much any of that cost, but I know what I ate and what I drank and what it cost. So, when the check comes, he does pay for it. So, yeah, he paid for it. He paid for the check. We sit and we talk for all of maybe five more minutes after the... Lady brings his car back. So I get up and I attempt to gather myself. I'm putting my coat on. I'm getting my purse, my keys, and I'm about to be out the door. And he turns to me and he says, well, can you leave the tip? Because you kind of an expensive date. And I broke the bank paying for dinner. What? Excuse me? Okay. told me he overdraft his account paying for my $20 meal and whatever his cost. I guarantee you the bill was no more than $50. Couldn't have been more than $50. He asked me to leave that tip. Now, before y'all try and drag me in the comments, I don't have a problem with leaving a tip on a date. But not the first date when you're trying to impress me. Not a date where you ask me to go out with you. You ask me to take me out. That means that this is an all-inclusive excursion. <sighs> yeah. I don't have a problem with leaving a tip on a date. But um, if you ask me to go somewhere, I expect for you to cover the expensive. If I ask you to go somewhere, I'm covering everything. That's on me. I asked you. It's on me. So I expect the same in return. Again... I'm old school, so I am. I do believe that the man should pay on the first date. Um, and I, when I say pay, I mean pay for the dinner and the tip. That's all one one bill. Anyway, so I oblige. Honestly, at this point, I'm just ready to get home. So I'm like, you know what? I don't even know what the bill was. So I leave ten dollars for the lady. I hope that was enough. Um, I, I'm, I'm very big on tipping. I worked in the restaurant industry for almost 12 years and I know what waitresses and bartenders make and how hard it is for them to make money. So I am very big on tipping. If you do not tip, stay your ass at home. But anyway, I leave the lady $10 and I'm, I'm about to be out. Like I'm booking for the door at this point. Like I'm out. I'm ready to go home and block his number. I need a drink. So... I'm almost at the door, and he's like, hey, Miss Lady Kim, can you take me home? What? Huh? Okay. Can I take you home? 
He was like, yeah, my car broke down. I, I, I don't have no money to get home because I paid for dinner and the Uber and I don't have no more money to get home. So how the fuck you getting where you got to go tomorrow? That ain't none of my business. I'm a woman of God. I said, okay, I'm going to take you home where you live. Now, had you, you remember I had told you to put a pin in that when I told y'all that he said his car broke down he was going to take an Uber to the bar, right? When I asked this man where he lived, he said on the other side of the development where we were. Now, I have dated some big men, but he was not one of them. He was very athletic built. His legs, both his legs were in working order. And you want, first of all, you took an Uber from wherever your car broke down at, from your house to the restaurant, the bar, and it's less than two miles, I, my fat ass, would have walked that far. And now you want me to take you home because you ain't got no money to get another Uber. And you can't walk from one side of the street to the other. You know what? I'm going to take your ass home. And then I want you to block my number because I'm damn sure about to block yours. So I take him home. I drop him off. And he was like, so when I'm going to see you again? Get the f*** out of my car. When can you see me again? Never. 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 That's when you can see me. The 31st of February. That's when you can see me again. Please get out of my car, sir. Yeah, I was so over it. I, that's the last date I've been on. I have PTSD about dating now. Because of that experience. Like, from beginning to end. From inception to reality. It was horrible. I have never experienced anything like that. And I guess I don't want to experience it again. Because I have yet to go on another date since then. And this has been, it's been almost six months since that happened. So, yeah. That was the worst, absolute worst date Naisha Nicole has ever been on. And probably anybody else. So, I hope y'all enjoyed that story time, that sip and pour. Um... I just, I'm still laughing at this. Like, I still can't believe that shit happened to me. But it did. So, y'all tell me, Calvary, what's the worst date you've ever been on? Have you ever been on a bad date? What's the absolute worst date you've ever been on? Comment down below. Let me know. Make sure that you like this video. Or if you didn't like it, then don't like it. But, like this video. Comment. Share it. And above all else, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, become a member of the Calvary because we would love to have you and you made it this far to the video. So clearly you like my content. So go ahead and subscribe. Okay. Okay. Now that we've gotten that out the way, um, yeah, let me know what your worst date was in the comments down below. I would love to read those. Honestly, make, help me not feel so bad about this. Let me know I'm not the only one because I am distraught over this. So, yes, please let me know what your worst date was. And until next time, it's time to clean, y'all.